Hi there, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to use Dreamweaver's Extract feature. Now Extract in Dreamweaver makes it super easy to convert something like this Photoshop mockup I have here in front of me into a fully responsive website. It opens a fully interactive PSD inside of Dreamweaver. Then it allows me to copy things like the colors, these font styles, any images I have, and lots of other web design attributes from this PSD and copies them directly as CSS into Dreamweaver. So let's switch over to Dreamweaver and get started. Now for this tutorial, I've got my extract-start.html open. I've also got my view as developer. You can see here in the top right. Okay, you could be at standard. I'm gonna use developer for this one. It will still work in standard, no problem. Also, if you'd like to follow along, you're gonna to have to create a site definition. I've already done mine now. If you wanna do your own, you go up to site and you go to new site. Now we're not gonna have time here to go through all the site definition. There is another tutorial here that goes through that in a lot more detail, so go check that out. Now extract is a panel, okay, and to find it, you go up to window, okay, and down here to extract. This panel will open up here, and what I'm gonna do, just to make it a little easier to work with, is I'm gonna dock this panel by grabbing the word extract. You can see it here in the little tab. I'm gonna click, hold it, drag it, drag it, drag it, and you'll eventually see, see this little blue line that appears? between my files panel and the coding panel here. If I dump it in there, you can see it sits side by side. What it'll also do is my files panel here, I'm gonna make him a little smaller by clicking these two chevrons here. Okay, see these two little arrows? I'm gonna click him and he gets a little bit smaller. Now for this to work, you need your PSD, okay, your Photoshop document that you've made in Photoshop. You need to upload it to your Creative Cloud library. Okay, now to do it, it's quite easy. I've already done mine here. Okay, but if you need to do yours, okay, you click on this little Creative Cloud icon here. And there's an option that here that says Upload PSD. And after it finishes uploading, you'll end up with an icon like this. Okay, and I've opened mine up. Now this extract panel here is exactly how it looks like in my Photoshop doc. Let me show you. You can see I have two artboards here, and you can see in Dreamweaver, they're there too. Let's have a quick little look around. If I click on the Style panel here, you can see it's reached into my Photoshop document and given me some really useful stuff, okay, to do with what fonts are being used, or the colors that are being used, and any gradients. Pretty cool, huh? We'll go through this in more detail in a second, but let's have a quick look at layers. Okay, these are the layers that are being used in my document. If I click on this 1200 pixel version and click this folder here, you can see these are the folders that exactly match my Photoshop document. And what we've done is we've made folders inside of Photoshop just to group things together to make it a little less confusing. So I'm gonna twirl these back up again. I'm gonna close down my layers. This little drop down here allows me to kind of zoom in and out. I can pick 25%, I can pick 50, or back to fit, fits both artboards in. So I'm zoomed into 50% now, and you can see if I hover my mouse around, you can see some of the elements on the page get this little box around it, and it just means that these are selectable. I can click on them and get different details. So all in all, we get the feeling, right, that this PSD is gonna give me a lot of information that's gonna make it super helpful when we're making our website. So the first thing, and probably the most important thing for me, is translating all the designs that I've done in Photoshop into language that I can just put into my website. And a lot of it is just CSS styling. Okay, let's say something like the gradient down the bottom here. There he is down the bottom of my Photoshop document. Let's have a look at my file currently. We're gonna use real-time browser preview. So down the bottom right, we're gonna click on Google Chrome. And this is the page as far as we've got at the moment. So lots of it are done, but there's lots of it that hasn't been done as well. You can see it on the bottom here. This is my footer and it's big and white and I want it to be that nice gradient color. So let's jump into Dreamweaver. So lovely gradient, I would like you to tell me your secrets, okay? And I can do it a couple of ways. The easiest way, if I click on him here, it's guess that I probably mean background image. Okay, and you can slide along here and it's got the gradient and all of its different attributes. All I need to do is with it ticked, I can click copy CSS. And this is feeling far too easy. I'll scroll down the bottom and I'm gonna find my footer. Where are you? There he is there. I'm gonna use the new fancy quick edit. Okay, so I'm gonna right click it and go to quick edit. What that's gonna do is it's gonna tell me that there is some styles applied to footer already. Which ones? Not this overall HTML one. Okay, it's this footer one here that I want. Okay, and it's telling the footer have a top margin and some padding, and it's got a color of white. But remember, color by itself refers to the font color. And what I'm gonna do is paste in the CSS that copied from the extract panel. And it can't be this easy, surely. Oh, but it is. Okay, I love it. And the best thing about it is that it not only is it put in the gradient, but it's also put in the browser prefixes, okay? Because gradients is one of those CSS properties that's still quite new and browsers need to be told what to do. There's WebKit, there's Moz, there's Opera, and yes, it's done it all for us. 
And seriously, that's enough for me. If the extract panel did nothing else, just doing gradients with all the browser prefixes is enough for me, but it does a whole lot more. So let's go check this in the browser now. You can see here, here's my lovely gradient and it matches perfectly my PSD. Now let's jump back into Dreamweaver and look at a slightly different way of going about it. So we selected it and ticked it here and said copy CSS, that's great. But remember at the beginning, we saw the styles panel. If I click on him, it's already gone through the document and found all sorts of useful things in here. And you can see here's my gradient, okay? I can click on it and I can do the exact same thing and click copy CSS. It doesn't matter, you get the same browser prefixes. It just depends on which way you prefer working. So let's close down quick edit. So next up, we're gonna look at extracting images from our PSD. I'll show you the image we want. Let's jump to Photoshop. It's this stamp image down the bottom right here. I wanna grab him off my PSD because he's currently not in my web design. So to get him, I'm gonna close down styles, okay? And I'm gonna open up my layers panel from earlier. And I want the desktop version that I made, okay? So it's this artboard called 1200 pixels, okay? And there's my stamp image there. Okay, I click on it. You can see it kind of moved over here, super smooth. And on the right-hand side, here's this little download button. If I click on him, it gives me a few options. It's gonna tell me where would you like to put it. Okay, in my case, it's defaulted to my images folder. If yours doesn't, it means you might not have set up your default images folder in your site definition. Remember, there's a video that goes through site definition specifically, go check that out. But even if it doesn't, you can click on this and tell it where you'd like it to go. Okay, mine's fine in images. Now you can rename it, okay? Mine's called Stamp, that's perfect for me, but if you're naughty like me, and you've got all sorts of untitled layers, okay, you can go and name them at this process. You can see it's gonna append it with a PNG because we've got it selected down here. Now I want this to be transparent, so I need to be a PNG 32, but I could pick a PNG 8 or a JPEG if I needed it to. Now the last of the options are really handy if I'm working with a responsive site and I've decided to switch out the images for the different media queries. So what you can do is you can click this pencil here, you can pick the different sizes you'd like. Okay, you can pick the medium DPI, or the extra high for retina screens, okay, or the extra extra high DPI for even larger screen resolutions. Okay, so you decide what you wanna do here first, tick these, okay, click apply, and then what will happen is when you hit save multiple, It'll create separate stamp images. It'll append them with the correct file names okay, and put them into special folders that you can go and work with. We're gonna keep it a little simpler here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale ours to a three times scale. And we're just gonna resize this for the different media queries. Let's hit save. Now let's have a little look where it put it. Okay, so over here, my files panel, okay, I'm gonna click on files. There's my images folder. And inside of here, I should have one called stamp. And there he is, stamp.png. Great, it didn't exist before. The extract panel pulled it from my PSD, saved it as the right format, and jammed it in there. Nice. Let's close back the files panel. Now I wanna put this image in my HTML over here. I'm gonna put it here. Okay, this is my stamp's gonna go. I'm gonna put in my SRC for the source. Okay, press return. I'm gonna click on browse. And in my images folder here, and where's Mr. Stamp? There you are there. Great, click open. Cool, let's check him in the browser. And there he is. If you're like me, this is gonna save you loads of time going back and forth between Photoshop and Dreamweaver. And it gets 10 times better when I've been handed somebody else's Photoshop mockup. It means I can match exactly the look they want, stopping all that back and forth with a designer about how I've interpreted their mockup. For me, this is gonna cut loads of time out of my projects. All right, so the site here's looking good. And the next bit that's missing, there's a large bit of intro text that's meant to go in here. So let's go and see what we can do to pull text from a PSD. Okay, so back here in Dreamweaver, I'm gonna close down my layers panel and I'm going to, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get this text here, this paragraph text. Okay, and I wanna just copy and paste it from my PSD into this document here. So without having to open up Photoshop, I can just click this one that says copy text. Awesome. Find my P tag that I'd like it to go inside and just hit paste. Too good. Now this is super handy, especially if you're like me and you're often designed with the copy. Okay, you do a little bit of copywriting in your mockups. And if you're like me, you're a terrible speller, okay? I need to be able to copy this stuff in and out of designs that other people have made. Let's go check it in the browser. Boom, such an easy workflow just copying from the PSD straight into code. One of the obvious problems here is that the font is a teeny bit tiny, okay? And I imagine at mobile, okay, it gets even worse, okay? It's even smaller and a little bit unusable. So let's have a look at how we can work with different font sizes at different screen resolutions or different media queries. So back to Dreamweaver. Okay, so now one of the huge benefits of using multiple artboards in Photoshop, you can see here my design, I've got a smaller version, okay, for mobile, and I've got a larger version that I've designed for desktop. 
And the advantage now is that I've spent time in Photoshop working through my design, deciding what font looks good at mobile screens and what font size look good on desktop. Now, instead of having to reinvent the wheel and try and recreate that, what I can do is just dig in and grab the different sizes and the different line heights that I've developed in Photoshop and put them straight into my CSS. Super helpful. So we'll start with the mobile one. You can see here's my text. If I click on it, what I want to do is I would like to take, I don't want the font family or color. I just want the font size, not the font weight, just the line height and the font size for me. Now in the spirit of true responsive design, I should really be using EMS or EM to be styling my font sizes. Okay, but by default, you can see here, Dreamweaver is using pixels. Don't worry, you can go and change that. So let's go and do that real quick. So under Dreamweaver CC, okay, down to preferences. If you're on a PC, it's under edit. Towards the bottom here is preferences, but on my Mac here, it's under Dreamweaver. We're gonna jump down to extract here on the left. And down the bottom here, it says preferred font units. Okay, so it's setting to pixels. I'm gonna choose EM, okay. And we're gonna leave the base font size at 16 pixels. That is really typical. Okay, so I'm gonna click apply, click close. And to update it, you might have to click in the background and just back on again, and it will set to our new EM sizes. Okay, and remember, I just want the font size and the line height. Now I'm gonna copy the CSS, and it'll only copy just these two features for me from my mobile upward. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find what's controlling this P tag in our mobile view. So let's jump to our styles.css. So we're gonna find the text, okay? And it's this one here, it's this intro P tag that is controlling this bit of text here in my HTML. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste them in. You can see it pastes in just the font size and the line height from my mobile artboard in Photoshop. Okay, let's save it and let's check it in the browser. I'm gonna resize the browser to kind of mimic a mobile device. And you can see now my font is more appropriate for a mobile screen, but more importantly, it matches my Photoshop document, okay? The design I spent a lot of time figuring this out on. Now we've done the mobile, but you notice as I make the document a lot bigger, okay, it's still reasonably small at this desktop size, or at least it doesn't match my Photoshop document. So what I wanna do is jump back into Extract and find out those details from my desktop view. Okay, so I'm gonna shuffle across here. I'm gonna find the text here, okay, and it's bigger. I'm gonna select it, and again, I just want the font size and the line height. You can see it's remembered EMs. Okay, I'm gonna copy that CSS. Now, in my styles.css on this side, I'm gonna go find the media query that changes my CSS depending on the screen size. Okay, so I'm gonna go find it. And here's my media query. Now, media queries are used to trigger different kinds of CSS at different screen widths. You can see this one here, this bit of code underneath this media query here, where it has the at media, okay, will only get activated when the screen width is 768 pixels or more. And in our case, that's how our browser is going to know to use this different font size when I get to a bigger screen size. Now, if you want to learn more about media queries or CSS layout, there is a video here that covers that in a lot of detail. But for now, let's scroll down and let's find our intro.p. And there he is here. Okay, I'm gonna paste this in. So what will happen is the intro.p that we did up the top, okay, that is activated when it's at mobile screen and it will use that font size and that line height. But because of this media query here, it says when the page is bigger than 768 pixels, override those settings and change it to this. Let's save it and check it in the browser. So let's work backwards. Let's start at mobile size. Okay, and there's my intro text. Okay, but when it gets to a certain screen size, bam, you can see it's no longer small, it's that bigger size with the bigger line height and it matches my PSD perfectly. So let's switch to Dreamweaver to wrap up. So lovely web design people, that is the extract panel. You now have a new tool in your Dreamweaver arsenal from turning PSDs into websites. We are able to open a PSD in our extract panel, pull out things like our colors, gradients, pull out the text or the CSS properties, save images directly from there, all without leaving my lovely Dreamweaver interface. And that is very cool.